Hey, everybody. Welcome. This is the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley. And every week we bring you the stories of people who are engaged in all sorts of cool and interesting ways of making the world better locally, globally, and digitally. The Rotary Club of Silicon Valley is part of Rotary International, 1.4 million members, Rotarians, Rotaractors, and 36,000 plus Rotary Clubs around the globe. One of the things about our club as an online and asynchronous club is that we get to connect with fascinating people anywhere where there is a, a working internet connection and, and a story to tell that we think might inspire the people who happen upon our feed. And today we're going to be talking with Hungaru. Uh, Ogombayar, who is with What Three Words. Uh, her, You've probably already seen her bio if you're on our page, SiliconValleyRotary.com. Uh, by, by looking through that, you know you can check that again. If you're on our YouTube page, you can pause, scroll down a little, and see that bio there as well. But, uh, but in short, she is from Mongolia, headed up the office there for What Three Words, uh, and is now in London uh, as part of the, the team at the global headquarters. Uh, Hungaru, if I have any of that wrong, just, just let me know. But it is it is a pleasure to have you with us. I'm excited for you to tell us about how innovation can come to addressing. And yeah. I hand the mic over to you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Rushton. I'm very happy to be here um, and very excited to be talking about what Tarot is today. So thank you so much. Um, we're going to talk about what what Tarot is, how it works. Um, and I thought I would also talk about certain use cases where what Tarot helped people to solve their community issues and how other organizations um, and communities have used what Tarot is to make lives easier for, for everyone. So before I go into what What Three Words is and how it works, perhaps I thought maybe just to give you a context, What Three Words, we're based in London. Um, we've been here around for 10 years now, um, and we have different offices in different parts of the world, like the one that Rushton just mentioned. We have an office in Mongolia as well. Um, and today, I think we're over 120 of us, um, I believe. Um, and essentially, the idea of What Three Words is to become a global addressing standard. And I'll get into as to why we decided to create What Three Words. So the reason why we created What Three Words is not is because not all addresses are easy to find. Um, and probably one of us in, the, in this room or one of us who are watching probably had this issue um, of being lost uh, or maybe ending up in a wrong address that you were supposed to. And we, 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 we encounter this all the time. And this is because street addresses um, was created, I don't know how many centuries ago, um, where it was just used for a delivery man trying to deliver mails in a small village where they used a physical map. However, the way in which we interact with addresses have changed so much over the years um, with the technology that we're currently using. However, the street address itself never really changed before. Um, so things like duplicate addresses, so for example, Maple Street, Los Angeles, you can see that there are multiple of them coming up on Google Maps. So if I'm going there for the first time, how would you be able to know which one is the right one that you're going to? Um, or venues and big stadiums, big warehouses, for example, when you search it on Google Maps, you'll usually see a pin, in, pin dropping in the middle of the building, but it doesn't tell you which one is the right entrance they want to go into, which one is the car parking lot or facility entrance that you're looking for. Um, and people overall just sharing on Twitter how frustrating it is to not be able to find the exact road or street name. Um, and also new builds um, and new flats, they often take, I don't know, six to 18 months to finally appear on Google Maps' database or on satellite images, which can be frustrating as well. And if we talk, if we talk about other places, like maybe um, in, in the middle of the hiking trail or in the middle of nowhere in the forest or in the mountain, for example, how are you then able to describe your location when you're in an unfamiliar area or when there's no street address, street address at all? So that can be really frustrating when you try to call maybe emergency services or when you've injured yourself, you want to call somebody, describe your location when the time is of essence. This can be a really difficult problem to have. And just overall, businesses struggle with addresses a lot as well, um, because of how um, because of how vague it can be. For example, postcodes they usually cover large areas, and it's hard to pinpoint an exact entrance or an exact entrance or a backyard or a contactless um, drop off point for your delivery, for example, which can be frustrating. Road names we've talked about it. Sometimes road names are not even there. There are so many unnamed roads that you can find on satellite images, for example, um, and so on. So we've thought about this and we said, 
okay, is there a very easy and universal way of pinpointing an exact location on a map? And there is, which is called GPS coordinates, latitude and longitude. However, we never used this as humans before. We never really communicated with GPS coordinates. I would never gonna, I would never ask Russian to come meet me at a coffee shop at this um, location. I can't even memorize it. Um, so this is just not a human friendly way of communicating a location. Machines can understand that. However, humans would usually find it difficult to enter to a machine, for example. And there is also a way of sharing a map pin, which is great and works perfect, perfectly when you're sharing it within an exact same platform. However, if you're trying to describe a pin over the phone, for example, then that can become an issue. Um, so essentially, the solution to all of these problems that we've just talked about is what three words. Um, and basically how what three words works is that we have divided the entire world um, into the small grid of three meters by three meters square. So I believe it's 10 foot by 10 foot. Um, so every 10 foot square has now its own unique three word address that is made from the dictionary. So it's all randomly assigned using an algorithm behind it um, and it's fixed, it's never going to change. So for example, this three word address right here in the middle of the mountains, mixture picturing museum is the only mixture picturing museum that you'll find in the entire world. So there are 57 trillion of these small grids to cover the entire world, including the sea, which is really great. So now everywhere in this world, um, even if it's a rural location, rural property, or in the middle of the park, mountain, um, they all have three word addresses that you can refer to, um, that you can say it over the phone, write it in a letter if you wanted to, um, and communicate very easily. So what's really behind um, the scenes and what's really behind um, the technology is, is that we are taking the power of GPS coordinates and then converting it to a very easy to communicate human friendly location reference, which we call it a what three words address. Um, so the this long digit of number is now converted into, into a tower census and this is the only piece of information that anyone needs to know to find this exact square. And we've made it also um, easy to communicate in all different languages. Um, so what through it's now available um, in over 54 languages and counting, we're always launching new languages. The idea of it is to make what through words accessible in all different languages. So anyone can use um, their, their addresses in their own native languages, just like how they would use their street addresses, for example. Um, so some of you might've encountered our mobile app um, which is now accessible for everybody to use on iOS and Android. You can download it. You can discover your what three words address. You can find your home's three word address, your office's three word address. You can search for your three word address, share, navigate, and save. Um, and the great thing about it is that the app works completely offline, meaning that even if you don't have internet connection, you'll always be able to see your location with what three words, which is which is pretty amazing. Um, and there's another part of our business, which is um, basically a licensing of a set of code, um, an API, um, where we offer this to businesses like, for example, um, emergency services or local governments or even um, e-commerce and logistics navigation apps where they can convert um, a three-word address into GPS coordinates and vice versa. So they can use this small set of codes to enhance their business operations um, and to increase their customer experience and so on. So that's basically what what three words is and how it works and what are our main products. Um, we are now used by thousands of different businesses in different parts of the world. Um, and like I've mentioned, from local governments to car navigations, to ride hailing apps, to e-commerce and logistics, and so on. Basically, every business or every organization that deals with addresses can use what three words now. So to really go into some of the examples as to how what three words works, this is a great example in the non-governmental organization world or humanitarian organization world where UN assigned, this is an app for disaster reporting. They have now integrated what three words as you can see on the right hand side, um, where you can see the three word address. People can use what three words now to report natural disasters um, and it will be transferred to, um, to the apps database um, where people can use the three word address as well. Um, Mexico City earthquake, where we were also used, um, our What Three Words app was used for volunteers, by volunteers and um, rescue operators to use What Three Words to 
find people, rescue people, because oftentimes, unfortunately, what happens is infrastructure and roads completely um, breaks down and there's no um, there's no way to reference your location any longer with street stresses. Again, hurricane um, hurricanes and natural disasters where what yours has been um, proven to be helpful as well. This is one of my favorite stories, Gateway, Gateway Health South Africa. So what they have done is that they have uh, printed a three-word address attached it to an every door in this um, settlement in South Africa where pregnant women live. Um, and they usually struggle with getting a medical staff medical help because of their um, because of the lack of addresses over there or how inaccurate it is. Um, so what they have done is that they've printed this small placard that has the three-word address and attached it on the doors. So now anytime they want to call a medical staff, for example, they can just say the three-word address over the phone to call an emergency services. And that's the only piece of information that they need to find this exact door, for example. So when time is of the essence, when every second counts, it's very crucial for you to be able to communicate your location. And this is an example of how it can be done really easily as well. Um, sleep pods. Um, this is also an organization and a community that helps with rough sleepers. Um, and they would they ask now people to report homeless people on the streets with your addresses so that they can find it and provide and offer the sleep pods so that they can sleep in a much more I guess um, more more comfortable way, which is really great to see. Um, and we often hear about new. Um, examples like this all the time um, where people share these stories on Twitter and on all over social media, which is amazing to see as well. I also wanted to quickly include a few examples of um, people with um, additional or special needs. So we work with a lot of businesses, organizations or communities that usually look after people with um, disability needs. And this is an app called My Life Planner where they have integrated the API that I've just talked about. So they can now see their current location with what through its address. They can share it with whoever that they want to, their family members. Um, so our app is also very accessible for people to use. Um, and this app specifically integrated what through words so that they can share their location very easily. Um, this is also another app called Access Earth where they display through which addresses of um, businesses or locations um, that has accessible entrances or wheelchair entrances, toilets, and so on, so that people can find these specific locations very easily um, with what three words. You can click on it, you can navigate to that exact location, for example. This is also one of my favorite uh, favorite um, examples of how what three words is being used. So this is by a local government at Neathport Talbot, where they now also integrated our API and also allow people to report um, locations with your addresses for flight tipping or for broken concrete or maintenance areas where they need the local government's attentions, which is really great to see as well. Um, and our app also has a feature called photo feature where you can take a picture, you can attach a through address, you can send it over to um, the local authorities or to your friends, to whoever you want to share it with. Um, and they will be able to navigate to this exact through address using our app as well. Um, in addition, oops, sorry. In addition to um, the examples that I've just mentioned, emergency services governments have now started adapting what three words. This is an example of Austin City, and they now encourage people to use what three words. They've been sharing it on their own social media, um, talking about how useful it is to have the app on the on their phone, so that when emergency situations happen, you can um, use what three words to communicate where you're exactly at. Um, Dallas Fire and Police Department as well recently announced that they are now working with what three words and that they're now um, able to receive through addresses from the members of the public. Um, and this is also an example of um, LA Fire Department. Um, and they have done press um, announcements as to how they are now accepting what three words addresses and so, so on and so forth. Example of UK emergency services, almost over 85% of UK emergency services are now enabled with what three words, Canada as well, and, um, and lots of different parts of the world. So these are sort of examples that I have for um, communities and how what three words can be very easily applied by both um, just consumers or users, but also um, organizations like the local 
um, authorities um, or even non-governmental organizations and so on. Now, just a very quick um, examples of how what words is used commercially by um, car companies that I've just mentioned. Um, this is an example of Jaguar Land Rover. Um, they have what words, they have integrated what words into their embedded car navigation, where you can now enter with your address and navigate to that exact um, square. Um, the likes of GHL, they have now adapted what words into their consumer app in the UK, um, where users can now put in their three word address for their deliveries. Um, which is really great to see another e-commerce example of Boohoo, um, an e-commerce store that they have now accepted, accept what three words addresses for their deliveries um, as well. So these are some of the examples that I had for today um, and very happy to take questions if there's any question. Absolutely, there, there, there are questions. Uh, first, thank you very much for the presentation. It is a, a joy to be able to hear about uh, something that I, I think a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't quickly guess that there is there are innovative possibilities with addressing. So I'm going to start with a question about um, about language. So you know, I, I I would assume that one of the advantages of, of English, I mean, if you have 57 trillion spots on the globe, having lots of words in the language is going to be a huge advantage. Clearly, clearly. Um, but you're going to run into some problems, and I think the term is homonym. So if you have a a word like through, uh, so there's there's walking through the park, and there's I threw the ball. Are are people using particular kinds of strategies uh, that you find in in how they use the app and and apps that incorporate what three words in order to be specific about uh, about where they are? Yeah, uh, very good question. Um, thank you for that. So we tried to get rid of homophones as much as possible when we launched um, different languages because it can be confusing again. Um, we work with language consultants very closely um, to choose each of the words that are going to be added to our word list. Um, and in addition to that, we have this technology called AutoSuggest, where when you search for a three-word address, you'll be able to see the nearest location information down below. Um, so this helps people to identify that this three-word address, for example, is in this location. So for example, businesses or emergency services, for example, what they will often do is they will confirm the three-word address, repeat the three-word address, and then they will be also able to confirm the nearest location as well, just so that they are absolutely sure that the three-word address that are that they are receiving is correct and that the, that is the location that the person is at, for example. So there are ways that we now um, we can detect it and we can correct it, um, if that makes sense. It does. It does. Okay, got it. And um, similarly. You you have a slide that shows that that multiple languages are supported, uh, and and that's that's as it should be, of course. Is it the case that they are all aligned? So so for example, the the you know is is it is it always going to be? I would assume it is, but is it always going to be the case that that you know like uh, if if the if the address is is socks and uh and sunlight and happiness that that you end up with three completely different words in another language uh clearly not translations but but there's an alignment between them that's just a part of your database mm, very good question as well so when we launch new languages it's never a direct translation with one another um, because that can be very confusing because not all the words are going to be translated into one, one, one another perfectly for different languages. So we use a different set of words for all languages when we launch it. So the English um, word list is going to be different to what we have with, I don't know, French or in, in, in other languages. So they're never a direct translation with one another and it's it's completely randomly assigned. And again, um, like I've mentioned, we work with language consultants when we launch new languages and we'll kind of start with, uh, I guess, start building the word list um, whenever we um, uh, launch new languages. All right. And it, is there a minimum number of distinct non-sound alike words in a language that, that you need for the language to be able to use? Uh, what so what what I know is for um, for us to cover the entire world um, with English, I think we've used around forty thousand words, um, and with other languages like Japanese, I believe there were fifty, um, sorry, twenty five thousand um, words that we've selected. So it really depends on each language when we select it. Um, and for example, the case of Japanese, for example, is 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 because. Um, we only cover the land mass, not the sea, um, with 
um, different languages other than English. Okay. Um, however, we've recently kind of made it available for Japanese to cover the entire sea, and there are now um, fewer addresses associated in, in Japanese as well. Speaking of Japanese, uh, you did you did your your graduate I think graduate work or or college level study at, yeah. at at Ritsumeikan in, in yeah. Tokyo. Tell a little bit about how studying peace and conflict. I, I believe you know was the, you know the, yeah. the, the focus. How, how did that guide you towards <laughs> career in innovative addressing? Yeah, um, I wish that there was some sort of connection. I really wish um, there was. However, um, I first, so I graduated with Jamaican, I think, in February 2018. So I was trying to come back to my home country. Um, and then I was looking for jobs like, like a new fresh graduate would do. Um, and then I'm also like usually quite in tune with new technologies or new innovations or new companies that are being um, being used or the products that can be interesting. For example, I'm usually quite updated with that. And I've noticed, um, I've actually um, heard about our CEO talking about what he was on YouTube um, and he was explaining the concept how it works how he came up with this idea and I thought that was brilliant um, and then soon after I knew that there was an office in Mongolia which is also quite lucky and um, and even luckier because they were also hiring for somebody which is great to see so I was like okay great I'll do this um, and I applied and that's how I um, started working out with here it's, it's just coincidence but also a bit of luck I guess all right all right well that makes sense um, a little bit about the business model. Um, so, so it, it it seems like that there are a number of uses of what three words that are are, are very much kind of in the uh, how to put it the the public space, right? So you know you talk about the city of Austin effort, uh, you know the the uh, kind of things that people would do built around uh, disaster assistance. Um, if those are are th and this information is, is effectively available to anybody. Mm. You, you touched on this a little bit, but but how what what added value does the company provide a a a customer that is using the system in such a way as to as to build out uh, particular efforts related to their mission? Mm. So, for example, with humanitarian organizations or with emergency services, we provide our tech for free so people can use it. Um, however, um, our business model, what we um, what, what the main product is, is, is the API that I've just talked about, which is a set of code that businesses can integrate it as part of their own operations. So we charge based on number of conversions that are being made from what towards addresses into GPS coordinates. So if we take an example of e-commerce um, company, for example, they want to make sure that their deliveries are being made very easily and at the right location so that their customers are happy. Um, and in order to do that, they can integrate our what our technology and they can ask for the CEO address of their customers so that the customers can give their CEO address. They can use our technology then to convert that into a lat long. Um, and that lat long is captured and transferred to maybe their courier company or their delivery um, partner where they can use that information to then deliver that product at the exact location. So that's a value add there where what words can act as a complementary address. Um, and to note here, we're not trying to replace the existing addressing system. We act as a complementary address where people can use and businesses can use to enhance customer experience or user experience. Um, and, and that's sort of the main value add of what three words. Well, you you mentioned you mentioned that about um, replacing existing addresses. I mean, you know, obviously that that would be that would be a, a rather significant uh, chunk to to bite. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the interesting elements of one of your slides references a, a there there's a um, there's a social media post where where Samwise eighty one or someone sa says that traditional addressing is quote, gonna cost lives, unquote. And and that that was a very powerful moment for me in the presentation, just thinking like, oh yeah, those those moments of confusion represent genuine dangers. Exactly. Is is that something that that was part of the thinking of the founder towards towards developing this as a system? I think it's definitely part of it. Um so again to, to the example that you've just talked about right now. Um, it's, um, I think our CEO mentioned it in one of his talks um, where he said, 
when you don't have an address, it's almost like you're living outside of a law. So that can put things into perspective. Um, sometimes people, because of their lack of addressing, for example, sometimes people can then um, maybe give out their right to vote, for example, that happens in certain countries as well. And again, emergency services and so on, that can really then um, becomes, a, a, I guess, a much bigger problem compared to your you not being able to get your pizza on time, for example. So I think in different parts of the world, the context of addressing and how um, it can be frustrating is different. Um, so in developing countries, it, it might be a different story because they often lack um, good infrastructure, good addressing. Um, so yeah, again, to your point, it's a, it's, it's a very good point. And that was definitely part of the thinking. Well, I thought that was really underscored by the the example with the Northport Talbot Council. Mm -hmm. You know, to, to, whether it's uh, identifying potholes or, or or whatever it might be, th there's so many positive uses uh, of of a technology like this. I wonder what kinds of concerns come up. So, so one thought that that kind of went through my head was, okay, well, is is there is there a concern about privacy where someone who says, you know. If someone has this info and they then post something about this is where this person is or this this thing is, um, you know, is, is that something that you've ended up having to kind of talk through as a team uh, with, with regard to just things that, that people are beginning to ask you? Yeah, um, that's a very good question. And I think oftentimes we would give our street address details. It, 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 it's almost like it is needed for businesses or it's either need it's needed for the services that you're trying to get to know that you exist in that place and what two words is just another conversion of that information it's never really um have been a privacy issue for us where people um I, I personally haven't experienced that before. However, if you think about it that way, we already give our street address information to I don't know the services, the government or the local authorities, and the three-word address is just the simpler, I guess, more complementary information that can be added and that can be used um, for, for that matter. But um, we often don't really, for example, from our end, we don't share any of the few word address information that uh, that our that our users search to anyone, um, and it can be found in our terms and conditions as well. Um, so, haven't been a big issue um, for us, um, but I can definitely understand where you're coming from with that question. Well, I, I think you answered my follow up, which which has to do with terms and conditions and, and and how someone might use what they get from what three words as as they post information about others. So so that makes sense to me. Um, it, it is it is very exciting, you know, to to see the the social benefit possibilities with this. You know, you talked about you know sleep pods, uh, you know, and disaster relief, uh, and and and. The tremendous value to the uh, to those who need accessibility options uh, for different places is is there a particular moment in working with what three words that that where where you were interacting with someone and and their story? I mean, you, you captured a lot of these stories in, in your presentation, but um, is there a moment that was was especially powerful for you in thinking about the potential of the technology? Yes, um, definitely. So. The one that really stuck to me um, is my home country and they, the emergency services, they now accept with three words. Um, and I'm not sure if people have been to Mongolia, but it's a vast land mass and it's very big, it's huge. Um, and we are still, we still have nomadic communities where they, you know, go in to different parts of the country, um, depending on the seasonal and, and depending on the seasons and how it changes over the year. Um, and that is a very big, I guess, that was a very big moment for me because I remember my grandparents who were used to, um, who used to be one of those people um, where they would kind of move into different parts of the country, depending on the weather or depending on the season. And just kind of knowing that people can now, or my people like my grandparents can now give their three word address or can now have this technology if they want to um, and get the help that they need. Or I don't know, maybe share it with somebody so that they can 
find them um, in, in needs like that. I think that is a very powerful moment um, to know that it's reassuring that it's available for them. And we can, you know, talk about it, we can encourage people to use it, the more we do that, the more that people know about us, and they can use it in situations like I've mentioned before. So I guess, because it was very close to my heart and close to my origin, I think it was a big moment for me where I was like, this is really great to see. And then I'm very proud to be to be working here and to be part of this journey. Fantastic. I, I, as, as an educator, it's my hope for all of my students that they end up in work that, that they feel really matters to the world. And, and clearly that's in that space for you. That also represents a good moment for us to wind down the recording. Uh, before I hand it back to you for the final word, I'll tell all of you who are viewing this recording, thank you for taking uh, your precious time to, to enjoy the stories, hopefully enjoy the stories that we share with you. There are hundreds of videos on our, uh, on our meetings archive and our YouTube channel that, that are like this, this opportunity that we have to talk to people who are doing fascinating things and and in the space of a world where so much negative news is on uh is on 24 7 <laughs> repeat uh it is it is wonderful to be able to to share these stories of people doing really wonderfully interesting things uh, to to benefit others do two favors for us one is to scroll a little bit farther down the page if you're on our siliconvalleyrotary.com page there's an attendance piece let us know you were here it's just good for us to kind of know uh, where you know where where our reach is, uh, we're not going to do anything uh, scammy, spammy with uh, with that. So so you know, just let us know you were here. Additionally, at the bottom there is a forum, discuss d i s q u s, where you can leave thoughts about this presentation. You can respond to things that other people have said about it as well. This goes for the other elements of our meeting: the inspirational video, the learn something new piece, the the word about uh, our projects, the the humor. All all of these pieces are are open to you uh, to enjoy, and, and we hope you'll keep coming back week after week in order to find the kind of inspiration that we try to put out there for you. As we always like to do, we hand it back to our speaker for the final word. So Hongaru, I will, I will hand it back to you. Thank you so much. Um, so for, again, thank you so much for inviting me, Russian. I'm, I'm so, so great to be here today. And just to share with everybody that you can always download with your words. You can always um, have it on their on your device um, when you're um, when in need, for example. Um, so I would highly encourage people to try what three words, try downloading it, try using it. Um, and if it's relevant or if it resonates with your day to day, or even if it's with, you know, sharing your location for this um, for this event that you're going to with your friends, um, I would highly encourage people to start using what three words, even if it's just for their personal use. It's amazing um, when you try it. So. Um, highly, highly recommend that. And thank you so much again for, for having me. It was great talking about with her today. Excellent. And everyone, we will see you next week.